from Studio A in Texas, USA. It's the award-winning All Things Automotive Car Talk Show in real time. Just ahead on today's three-hour show, the 2021 Subaru Crosstech Trek Review. We'll also have a look at the 2021 racing calendar. Uh, we begin a new series with Ryan Ainsley and his car adventures, kind of. And we'll have the stories making automotive news headlines this week. That and more just ahead on today's In Real Time Car Show for the first Saturday of the new year. Happy New Year. January 2nd, 2021. Howdy, along with Mike out of this world, Mars, King Conrad DeLong, Jeffrey Zekin is just off camera. You'll see him in a little while when he does his pre-owned car of the week. I'm Don Armstrong. Glad that you could join us on this Saturday. It's chilly here in the Houston, Texas area. 39 degrees was the last time I looked at the temperature. Yeah, it's our second day of winter this year. Yeah, I got the heater going. And it's uh, only the second day of the year. <laughs> <laughs> we only have about 10 days worth of winter, so we can't use them all up at one time. What's That's the right. date? What date is today? It's the second. Okay. How many days do we have? 2021. Okay. Don't you? Yeah. So it's so nice to look <laughs> with 2020 hindsight. So now you don't, you don't have to go... 220 on your keyboard it's 21 and those are right next to each other well, so it's easier to zero and 21 you had to put a, all four digits in it you can't yeah, just we, do 20 we, we do four digit dialing here okay well you guys go ahead and waste your time and energy on that and i'll just do it my way <laughs> <coughs> well um We've got a, actually a pretty nice show uh, lined up for you today. We're going to spend some time, a lot of time, with Alec Udell, who is a road course racer. And uh, I guess he and his family own that uh, go-kart track up near Humble. Yep. Yeah. Houston yeah. Karting Complex. Yeah. HKC. And uh, I fly over it every once in a while. Boy, is that a nice place. Yeah. They, they host some car events there with some regularity as well. So it's not just karting, but... Yeah. Not that they have cars on the track, but they host meets and stuff there. With right, in the parking lot mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, so um, that ought to be a, a good conversation we're going to have with him throughout the morning. So I thought we'd start off this morning with Automotive News 2020's Hits and Misses. And it just so happens we start with the hits. All right. And we'll end with the misses. That's... Well, you've had three misses. <laughs> I knew he was going. Somebody had to do it. Somebody had to do it. Well, you know, in the English language, there are lots of definitions for the same type of word. Mm -hmm. And this one is, shall we say, hits and faux pas. <laughs> How's that? I think that would be French, wouldn't it? Faux pas? Foobar. Okay, you say that. I'll, I'll, I'll let, I'll divert to go, you. Go with, go with. The, <clears throat> I like go misses. With so the number one hit of the year is the Ford Bronco family. I think that it's well to be a hit of 2021 because they kind of delayed the launch of the car. Of the actual real Bronco, the Bronco Sport is now out. Right. Mm -hmm. So half of the equation is out. The and one they're going to sell the most of is out. No, no, no. You don't think so? No. You think they'll sell more of the big one? Uh, it's yeah. not the big one. It's the sport. I, I would say uh, the sport is actually bigger than the actual Bronco. Are there any numbers out on what they've sold so far? No, it's well, it's sold out for this year because okay. they, you know, they just took orders. So is that like two hundred thousand? <clears> the return of Ford's Wrangler rival generated online buzz and a strong pre-order bank. The Bronco may now be delayed, however until the summer of 2021, but the Bronco Sport appears to be off to a strong start in sales. They didn't give numbers. We don't have to do all that. We don't get that deep into it. We're just doing hits and misses, okay? That's true. Uh, another hit was the Land Rover Defender 110. Hmm. This is according to Automotive News. But, but I would not put that on the hit parade, but I guess... Still, demand has been brisk globally and is likely to remain so as output of the smaller Defender 90 begins this year. Okay. Here's one for you that Automotive News thinks is a hit. The Ineos Grenadier. Who? Uh, in, in Grenadier, <laughs> they're, they're, in they're Grenadier gr or something you put in a drink? It's the red stuff you put in a drink. Yeah. In a Grenadine. tequila sunrise. Grenadine. For those still pining for the original Defender, an all-new off-road vehicle that looks like that classic is expected to start production um, late this year at a former Daimler plant in France. But here we're talking to, Really? <laughs> uh, the Grenadier, <laughs> or Grenadier, is yeah. a... Oh, oh boy. <laughs> 
is a close French copy of the original off. Land Rover Defender that went out of production in 2016, but it is now powered by a BMW engine and has modern underpinnings, and it should deliver what the old Defenders failed to do, a waterproof and windproof ride. Okay, oh. well, good so luck on that. So they got rid of the Lucas wiring in it so they run better, right? I guess. <laughs> Another hit would be the Chevrolet Trailblazer. Really? Who says GM's mass market brand is only good at sports cars and big trucks? The Trailblazer. Who is it that's fiddling with their microphone? Have you had a Trailblazer to drive? Um, not lately, but I did drive it. Oh, I, I, I had it starts under $20,000, has quietly become one of the industry's fastest turning nameplates. What does that mean exactly? In an increasingly crowded and surging segment, small crossovers. Whose palm are they greasing by making that yeah, a hit? Well, fastest turning means that they don't sit on the dealer's lots very long. Okay. So it's just the turnover of the vehicle. You know, we always talk about inventory at the dealerships, about day's supply. So it's fastest turning means it has a very low day's supply. Well, you know, I don't know about you. And, you know, I've always been a Chevy man only because I've been a Chevy man. No reason. Dad didn't drive a Chevy. He drove, drove Buicks. Um, and I guess in a distance, I'm kind of a Buick fan, but not enough to go buy one. And I've always been a Chevy guy. I think GM makes a great engine or engines mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. decades now. But the Chevy Trailblazer, things under $20,000 for an SUV. When every manufacturer in the entire world builds a small or subcompact SUV, how, other than the name Chevrolet, why would that be at the top of the list? I actually have no idea. Because in my estimation, and Mars can chime in here, of all of the subcompact SUVs that are out there. That's not the one that comes to mind. No, no. I uh, actually owned a Trailblazer. Well, but Yeah, but that was that a different was generation a Trailblazer. a real Trailblazer. Yeah. This, this really is, is more of a CUV. Right. The yes, other one correct. had a full frame. It was an SUV. Right. And they, but it's become much like the rest of them. And I think if you take the badging off of it, uh, there's a whole bunch of them. You wouldn't like know that. the difference. Yeah, there's several of them. You take the badges off of them, put them side by side, and you couldn't pick them up. Well, off. the reason I had the Trailblazer, I, I couldn't afford a Tahoe, and it was a mini Tahoe. Right. Right. right, right. At exactly. the time. And it actually came in a long wheelbase as right. well. I had, the, I had this two rod in here for third row. But it, yeah, it was a yeah. great, great vehicle. Particularly if you happen to be able to get one of the SSs with a 350. Well, in that it. was. Mm -hmm. just but, but this trailbla this Trailblazer is not the same. This right. one no, is no. A, basically a subcompact. Mm -hmm. Now, why would it have such a good turnover? I'm going to tell you, there was a point in time where dealers had no inventory of anything except for blazers and trailblazers. Now, blazers are a little bit bigger than the trailblazer, and that may be why the turnover but rate the was so good. But the new blazer looks like every other midsize SUV, CUV on the market today. And they the all look alike. a smaller version of it. Yeah. I guess. But anyway. That's just my take. Yeah, I'm, I, so weird. another hit is the Tesla Model Y, launched in early 2020. It's on track to become Tesla's top seller worldwide. I, I, would, hmm. I would give that a hit for sure. At least in 2021, yes. Uh, another hit, the Cadillac Escalade OLED screen. The screen. Oh, is that the cur that's the curved one, isn't it? By borrowing organic, light-emitting diode technology commonly found in high-end TVs and consumer electronics, the 38-inch screen what? sets the standard for high-definition clarity in automotive screens. That's a hit. Not the car, mm -hmm. but the screen. That's in the dashboard? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it kind of comes across the whole dash. It's got the, Correct. the gauge pod as part of it. The mm -hmm. HVAC is part of it. The radio okay. nav is part of it, but it is one big screen. And if I remember correctly, so I think there's a curve, or a, it's not a flat screen. I think it actually has a curve. And so there's actually a screen that, that for the passenger mm -hmm. involved in it as well. You yeah. had a vehicle that you Some, somebody did a review on. Right. Uh, I don't think one that was Lexus that. or something did one. It was, came out of the middle and came all the way across in front of the driver. So it was a really big. Correct. Kind of put the center stack and, and the gauge right. pod. And and I think this, that's what this does as yeah. well. Well, but 34 inches uh, is a lot bigger. Hit new maneuver, maneuverability. <laughs> Rivian was first to demonstrate the new performance possibilities that multiple electric motors are capable of. The R1T Rivian can tank turn in place by spinning the wheels on the left and right of the vehicle in opposite directions. 
GMC's Hummer EV, set for a fall 2021 launch, can go into crab mode hmm. with rear-wheel steering that enables diagonal driving in extremely light, tight areas. W what would be the purpose in either one of those? Who would ever well, use that and why? Whenever they demonstrated on TV and their commercials and stuff, they're they're in a an off-road situation where it's a very narrow trail in between a bunch of rocks. That's the only place you'd use it. I would think that they, when they first introduced it, it was for parking purposes. Like at Walmart, that's the other it place you for, could use it. It was for parking purposes. Or monster trucking. How would, but who would actually, of the, all the ones that they sell, if they sold 10,000 of them, of those 10,000, how many of those would actually use that function? Probably less than one tenth of one percent. Correct. But be you, my guess. But you go back to it's the notoriety of we have it, nobody else does, and that gives them a marketing tool. You know, you go back mid 2000s, 2006, 2010 ish, the GMC offered four wheel steering on their trucks. And they literally had a rack and pinion and built onto the rear differential that would steer the rear tires. It would counter steer when you were parking. So the front tires would turn left and the rear tires would turn right to give you a tighter turning circle. And it would, it would crab steer at high speeds. So both tires would turn the same direction at high speeds. Um, they sold it for maybe about three, three years <laughs> and it went away. Yeah. And, and now, I don't even think you can buy parts for it. It's even. kind of like the swivel seats that came out in about 1970 or so. Those are in Oldsmobile. 73, yeah. Oldsmobile, uh, Pontiac in the Grand Prix. And the Chevy Monte Carlo. Chevy Monte Carlo, Buick uh, that Regal. Or and then, the, then the, the, there was the other one. Not only the steering wheel tilt, but you could push yeah. it out of the way. I think that was a uh, T-Bird yeah. item. T-Birds. How long did those things last? They were gimmicks. Is what they were, because you never... The, first of all, the rotating well, seats. Well, I think those don't really pass crash tests <laughs> anymore. <laughs> but at the time, it was just a novelty. Yeah, but the tilt wheel is still but in a cool no it was But a cool novelty. I mean, you know, there's I there's guess. a collectability to cars. those cars. But, right. the, but the issue is, it's a marketing is tool. Right. If, you, right. if you are looking at your budget, you're going, why would I spend another $2,000 on my car on that? as opposed to a $2,000 upgrade for something else that would actually make sense. Well, I would, I would think that if somebody who's, is looking... Whose microphone is that, that? That was me. I just bumped it. I would think that people that are looking at those kind of cars, it's it's that wouldn't be that big a deal. If you're really that worried about your budget, you're not going to be looking at a Monte Carlo or the Cutlass that's got those kind of options available on you it. You talked about crabbing when you're driving down the road on the, on the rear steer. Wasn't it you couldn't do that over a certain mile per hour well that the counter steer and the the in what was called in phase steering changed at a certain mile an hour so when you w when you were going slow the car would counter steer and cert and tighten up the but if you're doing radius. 60 you could oh, no that it, wouldn't it, work yeah I was oh say. no they would they no really? when you when you were at highway speeds when you would make a right turn the rears would go right and the and the front would go right as well. Now the rears wouldn't go drastically right, but they would go right. That was that was built into the system. That's scary. But it, it was supposed to be more stable. Hmm. I was actually watching a, a version of Wheeler Dealers and they actually had a car, I don't remember what it was, that actually turned the back wheels just about that much yeah. at, 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 at under a certain speed and it wasn't working. And uh, Ant uh, got the thing working. And, uh, well, Honda Prelude did a four-wheel steering uh, option on their cars back in the seven in the uh, probably in the 90s. I'm going to say. So here's another hit: the Polestar 2. Pole just something I, I just have a little issue with the name. Polestar Pole is the hot rod Volvo. Okay. That is Volvo's version of AMG. Polestar. Could you not come up with something like hot rod or? <coughs> Whatever. I was thinking dancer. The compact electric sedan from Volvo's cousin takes a leap into connectivity with the first use in a production model of Google's Android automotive operating system. Woohoo! Uh, another hit, General Motors' Ultium batteries. Maybe a breakthrough that brings the cost of electric vehicles in line with those powered by gasoline. GM says the Ultium batteries, which will launch in the GMC Hummer EV, will cost about $100 per kilowatt hour. 
deliver as much as 400 miles between charges, are capable of fast charging, and are designed to be installed in packs either horizontally or vertically, and they're good enough for Honda Motor Company. Because Honda's going to use them, apparently. Mm -hmm. uh, Ford F-150 Power Boost. The first hybrid electric powertrain in a Ford truck, a winner. The electric motor propels the truck at low speeds. The start-stop system, which I hate, <laughs> is, which is virtually imperceptible, according yeah, to this that's story. That's what they always say. And the big battery can power tools and household appliances. Okay, so that, that I'll give that as a, as a star. Because I think that's a good idea, and I think the uh, the 110 power plug in the vehicles, and GM's done it for a while, and Ford's now doing it, and I thought Ram did it as well. Ram does it, yes. I think that's genius. They've put on it all, all done it now. on the work truck thing. Um, so I'll I'll give that a a rising star kind of a award. Hmm. But some of the other stuff, I, I... You don't say that when you're talking about the pole star, though. Uh, <laughs> another miss is the Toyota Supra. The car's styling has been called out for being unnecessarily busy, and the timing of its launch could not have been worse. It arrived about the same time as the mid-engine Chevy Corvette. Sales, though, have been slow for the Supra. Toyota launched a lower-priced four-cylinder model. Why? <laughs> to help move the Supra away from direct competition with the Corvette. I don't think that there was ever any competition with the no. Corvette. Well, you got to yeah. remember that Supra is basically a BMW under the clothes, yeah. under the yeah, sheet but that, metal. Yeah, and that's... That's really what their core problem is, is because it's not really a Supra, and the Supra loyalists that want that vehicle. Right. Why didn't they? I don't understand. Yeah. Why do these car companies think that they need to change it so drastically? Why not do it like they used to do right. it, and just gussy up something that they've already got coming off the assembly line? Give it some more horsepower. Which is what the Supra was. Was a. a it originally was a bigger version and a better version of the Celica. Yeah, and exactly. Then, you know, and now it's... Put some spoilers on it, more powerful engine, some upgraded suspension tweaks and a little well, tweak in the interior. The 2JZ engine's a beast in the original Super, you know. Uh, miss, Ford Escape. The Escape is one of the industry's best-selling nameplates or has been for years. Escape sales, though, have collapsed in 2020, dropping from 226,000 through 11 months in 2019 to 161,000 sold this year. Uh, another miss, the Nikola Badger. Is the Badger the opposite of an opossum? Oh. <laughs> no, it sounds like something from Wisconsin. <laughs> And I think that you're going to have something about a badger yes, uh, later on. Uh, its arrival seemed exciting, but upon further inspection, it was dead on arrival. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Miss BMW's new mug. Call it Bangle Butt 2. New face of many BMWs to come. See the iX EV and the 4 Series. Gives the brand's famed dual kidneys a buck tooth makeover. Drawing widespread disdain from many otherwise passionate BMW admirers. Have you looked at it? It looks like the front of two Edsels. <laughs> the, the, the big kidney grill they've done it's now. been overdone. Oh, gosh. It looks like the front of two Edsels, like two big toilet seats. It's as upsetting as a beaver with a loose tooth. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> well, I'm not saying anything of that. Nope. Not going there. So, uh, so what anyway, other, what other misses were there? Um, that really, that's about it. That's that's it's not much, but the escape you had the escape was the first one. That that's a, a neat little looking vehicle. Was well, I'm just saying. There's so much competition yeah. in that every car maker has something to compete against it. Well, and that goes back to what you were talking about with the Trailblazer. Is they all have a certain look to them, you know, a, a CUV or an SUV all has a certain shape to it because it's or they're all trying to do the same thing. And at some point, to push them through the air, they all have a very similar... Right. The wind look. tunnels all show them all the same thing, and, and they're just trying to figure out a way to, and to make it be the same without looking the same. And BMW's done a good job of it with that, <coughs> that twin kidney... Buck tooth thing. Buck tooth thing. <laughs> you know, the other thing is, is that these vehicles... Really, when you come down to it, if you compare apples to apples amongst them, some clearly are newer than other ones. Some have been on the market for five yep. years. So if you keep that in mind, because every year, you know, they add more content That's or right. do something different. Make it different. But if you look at the when the model was drawn on a board and when it came off the production line, you know, you look and you see there's more content in this one for the same amount of money as opposed to this one. Yeah. 
and they perform better. They have better features. I mean, if you drill it down and actually do your homework, yes. you're going to actually be better off, I think. Well, but and that's why those that are what are long in the tooth that were designed and released five or six years ago, that's why they continue to add content, trying to bring the first generation buyer back to the same vehicle and that really doesn't work the way it used Not, to. and especially yeah. with today's generation that's actually going out and buying new cars right. because those kids are now in their 30s they've matured and they might not be in the same category as mom and dad buying the honda accord right and i think with that you know you talk about brand loyalty <laughs> I don't know that the brand loyalties are as strong as they used to be no, either. No, they're not. No, they're not because there's just so much out there, and they look so much alike, and they perform so much alike. But I was I was just thinking when you were talking about the different generations, I was trying to explain to a 16-year-old what a dial-up modem was. You know, it was yeah, dial-up. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. We had to go out on the Internet and find a recording of it and stuff. Our, our mother did and said, you know, this is what her mother grew up with. So um, we were explaining – we didn't have cell phones, you know. We didn't have – anyway, it was – there's a significant difference between us and them. I watched a video, and I'm sure that there are several of them this past week, <clears throat> of people that I would say would be more along the lines of our age or a little bit younger that actually used a dial telephone mm -hmm. so we know how it works. Mm -hmm. Put that in front of an 18-year-old today. They have absolutely no clue. None. They were trying to dial a phone number that had a prefix of an exchange, like PR37409. Yeah. Had no clue how any of that worked. When you stop and think about it, how would they? Right. They didn't have anybody to teach them. They've never been exposed to it. Right. One of them kind of figured it out because the parents said, yes, you're moving in the right direction with that thought process. And so among the three boys that were there trying to figure this out, they were, I don't know, 17, 18 years old, they finally got it, but it took them like five minutes to figure it out. To spin the wheel? To, yeah, to spin, yeah. The dial-up, yeah. Well, you know, I, I, we, when you talked about the phone number, you know, I remember when, uh, and I'm going to go back to I Love Lucy, everything was Murray Hill 5, you know, and then whatever the number was behind it. But I remember when, your phone number had a name to the first three digits right. and then it the last four digits. So you talked about four-digit <coughs> dialing. You guys do four-digit dialing over there in Niederville? No, but, we, we, I mean, you know, we had the, the, uh, the name whenever we had it all there. I actually, my crew, when I worked for the phone company, we actually took out the last full-party line in Texas up in Buna. Exactly. You had a party line where you pick it up and somebody else is on the line. Yeah, and you there's four, four different yeah. families yeah. used it depending on what, who got what ring. Or if you're uh, Andy Griffith and Mayberry. Sarah. Sarah. <laughs> give me, give me, you know. Give me Randolph. Give me the sheriff, Sarah. Eight, oh, ours was Randolph. It was RA2, <laughs> whatever, whatever. Yeah, party lines. And, and now you give it to a youngster. They would have no idea how to get no. there. No, well, and, and they don't even, I mean, there's something, they don't even teach, like, uh, uh, like uh, slide rules and stuff. They don't know what that is. They don't even teach that why kind would of you stuff want, anymore. Why would you care? Why well, would you just, want that? Well, it's just going through some of the things I've watched my grandkids, some of the things that they're taught. We were taught, but th they don't use them in this world, so they don't even teach that kind of stuff. You have to go down to the film But that's station. the advancement of technology as well. It, it is. You know, you look at today's cars. Um, and it, when the cars are the same to, way. But you don't have to teach somebody how to pump the brakes to come to a stop on well, an icy and, road. And that's one of the things we were talking about is the 16-year-old was taking her driving test. She hates to parallel park. But it's not too bad because she's got a backup camera in her mom's car to take the test. In. I don't trust those things. Well, or or they have. Yeah, but, it, but if you don't have one, and but you've always had one, but now you're driving right. a car that don't have one. Then you feel you're out lost. of place. Then right. you need rear steer. Well, or they have the, the automated parallel parking that thing is true. absolutely marvelous and uh, if, if it was available on a car i'd buy it today I if i use parallel parking i don't go anywhere where well, i that, use parallel well, that's parking. what we, that's what we finally got her convinced you know that she had to do it for her driving test yep. but she may never do that again correct um you know we need to move on here and do our first car review of the morning and that would be you mr mars <sighs> And um, I believe that you have the Subaru Crosstrek. Now, is this the new, new Crosstrek? This is the new, new Crosstrek. That actually looks pretty good. Yeah. 
It's actually, yeah, it, it's it's um, significantly it's not the biggest changed. one. You know, <coughs> no, but it's significantly the changed yes. from the old one. Yeah. Yeah, it's got a lot of different things in it. It's still a compact SUV, uh, and that's what they call it. But, you know, if you really look at it and you look at the way it's designed, yeah, I kind of like the term hatchback. To me, it's more of a hatchback than it is an SUV, but hatchback's kind of, that terminology's kind of old school now. They don't really use that much in marketing anymore. But we're talking about the 2021 Subaru Crosstrek Sport all-wheel drive. Compact SUV. And uh, it's been redesigned for 2021. It's got a big new grill up front, a new, some f new front bumpers. You know, I know that this is not one that you are driving because it has bicycles attached <laughs> to the top of it. Yeah, that's true. I, these are not, this is not one of my pictures. They might Absolutely. be. They're missing the wheels, though. <laughs> they might be him. <laughs> that could be. So, but, it, but you'll see there that it's got the new, it's got, this is the Sport and in the picture, and that's what we were driving. But it's got the, uh, around the wheel wells, it's got some trim on there, and it's all gunmetal gray, the front bumper, the grill, the wheel well trim. That's all part of that sport package They there. forgot to paint it. And the side mirrors are all, they're all side. No, I think it's the off-road. I and, don't like And it that. all matches up into the wheels. It's also a gunmetal gray. And it on here, it's in, but you get it on the red one, and it really looks pretty sharp. It's got auto headlights up front. It's got fog lights. Of course, you can see that it's got the roof rails that are on it. See right here? You know, it looks pretty good with the gray and stuff. It's almost a black, but not quite. Uh, got power heated folding side mirrors. Got a power moonroof in it. I mean, it's all built around the idea of going outdoors. It's one of the reasons up north where you get a lot of snow and stuff. These vehicles are really pretty popular. 17-inch alloy wheels. Uh, and again, it's all matched up with that, that gray gunmetal gray trim wherever they could the badging and things on it to because it's a sport model now you go to the inside of it and it's got a little bit it's it's got a StarTex trimmed upholstery now this is a, a, a moisture resistant you spill stuff on it, it's supposed to wipe off of it and stuff the front seats are heated the rear seat is a 60 40 fold flat seat now it will fold down all the way flat so that make some of them don't quite do that. It's got the we had the optional eight inch monitor up in the dash with the Starlink, with Subaru Starlink is what they call their infotainment system. Uh, we had the black and gray, and it's got the cross track stitching in the bright yellow there up on the back of the seats and stuff. So it gives it a nice trim look on it, and it's really got quite a bit of room in it. Whenever you get into the uh, the, the cargo aspect of it, from looking into the back of it, because. The sport model is all running towards that outdoor lifestyle. There's a lot of room back there. 55.3 cubic feet is a lot of room to put some stuff in there. Uh, and one of the things that, that I really liked about it, again, full flat floor, cargo, could put room stuff in it. But you can see here it's got a tall roof line, even there at the back where it kind of comes down towards the D-pillar and stuff. It's still pretty high, so there's a lot of headroom when you're sitting inside this vehicle. And that gives you with the thin pillars that it's got in the design of it. You've got a really nice span of view from a driver's perspective. Now, to get up under the hood, you got a for uh, new for 2021 as the standard engine in the Sport and Limited is the 2.5 liter. It's a boxer type engine. So it's flat. kind of a flat engine. Yep. Composed like cylinders. Yes. Very compact design, really, yep. and it lowers the center of gravity of the vehicle as it well. It does, and that's part of the driving dynamics of it with the all wheel drive. It does have the auto stop and start, Don. Um, it, it was noticeable at times, but it really wasn't too bad. This vehicle has 182 pound, 182 horsepower, which is 30 more than what the 2020 model had. It also has 176 pound feet of torque, which is the 31, I'm sorry, excuse me. It's 30 more and 31 more over the 2.0 liter, which was the standard engine. It's optional now to get a smaller engine, less horsepower, don't do it. Take the, take the 2.5. Um, it's backed by a CVT with the, it's got the dual function X mode shifting type to it. And it's capable of towing 1500 pounds, which doesn't sound like a lot, but if you're talking about jet skis or a small pop-up camper or things like that, that, uh, on two wheel axles, it'll absolutely do that for you. Now, uh, the ride and handling, when you get out on the highway, this vehicle's got 8.7 inches of ground clearance. Was this That's a long review? <laughs> I, I can make it that way. Apparently. No, you are. Well, I'm just, I'm enjoying it. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll hurry up. So it's got 8.7 inches of ground clearance, so if that's how it gets into the off-road, the sand, and mud and stuff. If you're looking for something to compare it to, you're looking at the Honda HRV. possibly. It starts at $21,020. Maybe a Mazda CX-3 Sport all-wheel drive. For comparison, 22,040 or a Jeep Renegade 22,850. You can get a base Subaru Crosstrek for 22,245. The base vehicle. 
Now you step up to the Crosstrek Sport, you start at 26495 with these features and stuff that are added on here. And the MSRP as tested for this vehicle is $29,145. And it's, uh, it's for at least four people. It's a very comfortable vehicle with all-wheel drive. And I think it's it's got a very good, solid feel going down the highway. It's cute. It's a good driver. Yeah. Uh, well, I've, I've always been a Subaru fan. Hey, the In Wheel Time Car Show streams on Facebook, YouTube, and InWheelTime.com, along with Twitch. Podcasts are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, iHeart Podcasts, TuneIn, Google Podcasts, Pandora, Amazon, and Podcast Addict. In Wheel Time Show continues right after this quick break. Is your business or company right. looking to stand out down. in a crowded advertising market? Looking to reach the real auto enthusiast? Well, you found it. You're listening or watching In Wheel Time, and so are your fellow enthusiasts. The In Wheel Time Car Show now reaches half a million, and we can put together a marketing plan that will engage them in your product, business, or service. To get the tires rolling, just shoot us an email to our marketing director, Jeff Zekin. His address is jeff at inwheeltime.com. Tailpipes and Tacos is Houston's premier cruise-in, and you're invited to join in. Whether you're a cruiser or a spectator, Tailpipes and Tacos is the place to enjoy made-to-order breakfast tacos, fresh coffee, and mingle with Houston's fun car people. Mark your calendar for Saturday, January 16th for Tailpipes and Tacos at the Lupi Tortilla Mexican Restaurant in Katy, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Tailpipes and Tacos is free, and everyone is invited. You'll see collector cars, hot rods, customs, magnificent originals, and resto mods all in one location. Cars from all over Southeast Texas cruise in and show off in a friends and family event. The Loopy Tortilla Mexican Restaurant on the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard, just south of I-10 and Katy. Drag racer, car enthusiast, and Loopy founder Stan Holt brings you Houston's hottest cruise in, Tailpipes and Tacos, Saturday, January 16th, 8 to 11 a.m. at Loopy's in Katy. The In Wheel Time Car Show will be there, too. Get your ride ready, and we'll see you at the Tailpipes and Tacos Saturday morning cruise in, January 16th, 8 to 11 a.m. at Loopy's in Katy, weather permitting. Texas Truck Works is your go-to truck customizer. From mild-to-wild lift kits, custom wheels, and steering and handling enhancements to the best personal and commercial wraps, Texas Truck Works delivers. Let Texas Truck Works founder Scott Stevens help you get the most out of your truck or Jeep. Texas Truck Works has decades of customizing experience, including power adders and complete engine swaps. Let the Texas Truck Works team design an upgrade plan that fits your budget. Get truck attitude today at TexasTruckWorks.com. 